So the next uh, portion of the, uh, the presentation is around uh, telemetry-driven event management. So part of the philosophy in Astro Linux was to model everything. Uh, so it's a fully model-driven operating system. Now that again, isn't necessarily unique to us, but what is unique is that we embed uh, on-change hooks absolutely everywhere in the system. So you can imagine uh, in a lot of other systems, you have these state paths that can be queried, but when you query them, um, really what's happening is you're getting some kind of cached version of the data. So this works, but it introduces a little bit of uh, overhead on the management stack to, uh, you know, to come in and poll for updates. The introduction of on-change telemetry, which again is in GNMI, it's not necessarily an Nokia specific thing, means that you only receive events when, when something actually happens. So, uh, you know, the second a state path changes value, you will automatically uh, get a notification back to the controller. Now, because we do this everywhere in the system, we introduced a framework that we call the uh, event handler, um, which allows you to monitor paths in the system and react to them changing. So that's kind of what I want to walk through in this, uh, this next segment. So now a different architecture diagram. All I really want to, uh, to highlight here is the whole concept of being able to stream absolutely everything in the system. So when applications are onboarded, um, you can imagine you've got your application code. The place where it changes a, uh, a, a, a field to a different value, it could be a session state or a statistic counter, it could be absolutely anything. There's a mechanism for it to look for any subscribers for, uh, for that path, and then to only publish if there is a, uh, an actual subscriber. And this introduces our event management system. So leveraging that stream anything approach, we uh, have a, a small chunk of Yang that allows you to configure a, uh, a MicroPython script which will let you ingest any event you want. It could be, again, any state path changing value, and you can write customized logic to process that event. Uh, and I'll go through some use cases on the, on the next slide. Now, unique to us is that these scripts aren't just processing events and then writing a log or uh, you know, generating an alert or something that you could do from the shell. Because we can extend our management stack, they are actually, um, they're actually able to populate their own state paths. So you can imagine um, you, know, you, have, you wanted to, to trend CPU utilization and generate an alarm if it goes above 80%. This is the kind of framework that would allow you to do something like that. Now using MicroPython is a little bit of a safety net because we can make sure that you can't load uh, additional modules in there, for example, um, but it gives people the flexibility they need to do whatever logic they want. And this logic could be simple, like changing the configuration, maybe shutting an interface down. It could be executing what we call a tools command. You can think of these as just uh, programmatic operational commands on the system, or of course, populating its own, uh, its own state paths. Um, and I will give you the slides so you can actually go through this flow, but I, I won't go through it now just for the sake of time. So what can we do with it? So one of the obvious use cases is something called operational groups. Uh, again, I, I assume most people have heard of these before. The general idea is that it allows you to share fate between uh, interfaces. So you can imagine in a data center, you have, uh, you have leafs and spines, and you're typically not running a control plane between your leafs and the computes that they're attached to. This means that you may have interfaces that are up between the compute and the top of rack, but the top of rack has no ability to forward traffic because maybe its uplinks are gone for whatever reason. Maybe BGP is converging or the interfaces are just down because of someone pulling fibers out of a patch panel. So operational groups allows you to synchronize the state of your uplinks with your downlinks or arbitrarily in any direction you want. Um, now, typically this is implemented as a feature in uh, most operating systems. We actually implement it using this framework, which lets people tune how they want that to behave. You can also do things like automatic and ongoing configuration. So uh, one of the use cases here is we had a customer that wanted, based on the LLDP information that was learned to automatically set interface descriptions. I'm sure uh, some of us have written scripts to do this in the past. The problem with doing it with scripts is that, let's say your LLDP neighbor changes because someone unplugs a cable and plugs in someone else then you need to make sure you re-trigger the script. Uh, in this case, because we're using on-change telemetry, when you, as soon as the LLTP neighbor disappears, the interface description gets cleared, and then you can plug it back in and whoever is on the other end is what will end up in the description. Doing it in MicroPython or Python really means that if you don't like that behavior, you can actually tune it and tweak it for whatever your environment. If you don't like the template, you can change the template. Threshold crossing alerting, I already mentioned, you can measure bit rates operational state of BGP sessions, BFD sessions, number of IGP neighbors, anything you want, uh, and then do threshold crossing alerting. Now, again, the unique part here is that rather than just trying to phone out to somebody else, you can publish into the system 
um, the alert that has been crossed. So if an alarm, uh, if you decide based on your logic that something bad has happened, you simply set a path and say, you know, alarm state true, for example. And then rather than computing all of that off box, your controller simply just needs to monitor that path. Performance monitoring is another good use case. So you can create arbitrary buckets, um, one, five, 10 minute, whatever you like, and populate them with data, um, creating sliding windows, pretty much anything that you would want in that kind of typical performance monitoring framework. Change history is another one. And this is actually what I wanna to show today is uh, the ability to monitor transitions of any field in the device. In this case, I'm gonna look at a BGP session state and not just you know, write a log file when the session changes value, but actually maintain a kind of rolling buffer of those session state changes so that you can look through them historically. You can imagine that if you were debugging a weird issue where you had BGP flaps every week, uh, this would be very, very useful for that kind of thing. Um, yeah, so I will, uh, I'll, I'll jump into the demo. Okay, same topology, but a different dot on the right. So <laughs> it's magically recovered. Um, and I'm, uh, I'm not gonna be doing much on here. I'm just gonna shut a interface down so that we can uh, see it. And yes, I know I need to make this bigger. Okay. Um, so on the right, all I'm gonna do is shut down an interface. We're using the same topology you, uh, you saw before where I have uh, kind of two dots that are connected to a spine. It's the exact same that pop dot that is on the right side of my screen and the spine is on the, the left-hand side of my screen. We can ignore the other, the other dot for this demo since I'm gonna be flapping the session between these two. So to uh, enable an event handler, so first I guess we'll look at the, uh, the system as it currently stands. So we have interesting. I'm pretty sure that's the right one. So we can see that the session is established and I could of course uh, use that uh, on change telemetry to monitor this if I wanted to. So now we should see, uh, I'm getting a bunch of information about that peer. Uh, I just want the session state though. There we go. So now if I come over here and we see my session went down. So it's interface ethernet 11 that we're gonna be messing around with here. Um, so I'll put that back to enable like that. And BGP timers will kick in in a second and that session will come back up. So what we're gonna do is add some configuration to the system, assuming I wanted to, to monitor this. So we have this new configuration tree system event handler. Uh, in fact, I'll populate my command here. It'll be easier. So this is the, the configuration that's needed. You can see we are just naming an instance. You can call this whatever you want. Passing it the, the uh, MicroPython script. Um, if we have time, I'll, I'll take a quick look at that. And then the paths. So in this case, it's just monitoring network instance default protocols, BGP neighbor, and it's monitoring the session state field. And I'm actually enabling the event handler instance. So what this is gonna do is create subscriptions underneath the hood for these paths. And of course you could have multiple paths here. Anytime one of these paths change, the MicroPython script here is going to get called. And of course, anyone can write these MicroPython scripts, uh, customers or, uh, or professional services, uh, if, you, if you don't want to write them yourself. And then it's up to the script to decide what it wants to do. In this case, the script is actually going to introduce a new state path to the system, which will monitor uh, and publish the state transitions that occur. So if I commit this, we'll see we're going through a Yang reload. And now if I... Monitor here, we'll see, I don't just have session state anymore. I also have session state last change. So this is the new path that gets introduced to the system. And that's what we are, uh, we're gonna look at. So now if I uh, come over here and flap my session. Uh, not event handler. So we see we actually get the various transitions that it went through. Now these are zero indexed. Again, that was just uh, the choice of whoever wrote the script. So the zero is going to be the most recent. And you know, as the index incre increases, that will be the least recent. Right now the session has been disabled. So we will enable it. Now, unfortunately I do have default BGP timers here. So this could take a second. I can uh, 
monitor this instead. Okay, I missed it. It's ready to come back. No, oh, it hasn't come back. Should I miss it again? There we go. So we can see that it published that uh, the session change value again to established. Again, the this in and of itself is, uh, again, you could write this to a log file, right? The benefit here is that you can create a GNMI subscription to this device and subscribe to that path for on change and you will get automatic notifications. So it allows the distribu uh, distributing of this information to a controller. And I chose a BGP session. You imagine that you could monitor an interface with this. You could monitor IGP neighbors. You could count routes. You could do anything you want and publish back to the system whatever information you want consumable by your controller. So it's a good means of uh, offloading some behavior to, uh, to the device rather than having to you know, suck in a bunch of information on a controller and figure this out there. Um, are, are the events stored in different places or are they filtered in the stream as it comes through? They're, they're in the stream. So just like you would get a, uh, I mean, if you subscribe to the path, you're only going to get stuff on that path. Yeah, of course. But, but if you subscribe to the route, system is, or all the events, you know, most of them I don't care about. Yeah. I mean, again, you get to decide where the events appear. In this case, what, what, what is kind of unique here is that it's actually augmenting this, this neighbor list, right? Which is a Nokia path. Events aren't in their own separate list so that you have to go look somewhere else. They have context where they actually are. Oh, okay. So in this it's case, a registration with the Yang. To yeah, in the yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So you can decide where you want to publish the state to. You could, of course, have this all in just a different list somewhere in the system. And then you can put all events there if you want. You could have, you know, 10 instances, one that monitors BGP and have that underneath BGP, one that monitors OSPF and ISS and have them respectively under those writing protocols. Mm -hmm. It's really up to you how you want to model the data. Uh, and how you want to consume it from a controller standpoint. Okay, thanks. So, and and I assume that, say, for a basic cloth fabric, you have a whole bunch of samples that this is the standard stuff you would want to monitor and push. Of course. To the yeah, yeah. Most of those use and cases. And on the on the receiving side, you have likewise the the coordination yep. uh, logic built out. So yep. That yep. So the ability to uh, the lower alarms and direct you to the higher level. Yeah, exactly, so. exactly. I mean, these are, are kind of custom, right? So there's no way for us to infer that these session state last change, we actually don't know what they mean, really. The script knows what they mean. It's the one that's populating them. Um, in terms of uh, general alarm uh, correlation and making sure you only see the thing that's relevant, like the interface going down rather than the BGP session and the BFD session, we do do that in our fabric services system. But that's because we have inherent knowledge of the paths, right? So we know, you know, we can put this in a graph database and say this interface is dependent on these sessions, for example. We can't really do that with this. This is entirely custom paths here that were added by that script. We do have a, a set of scripts that we ship with the product, which uh, kind of in, in adds some inspiration for things you can do. Like, in fact, all those use cases I described, there's MicroPython scripts that ship with the, with the platform. Of course, you're welcome to tune these. You're welcome to do something entirely different. But they kind of teach you the ins and outs of how the framework works. And these scripts themselves are, uh, are very, very simple. Like, if I look at uh, the Opera group, script you can see uh we have a ton of comments here so you know 37 lines of comments and all of this is just to allow you to run the script outside of event handler so it's about 60 lines of python to do an operational group use case so they're very very small scripts um they're meant to be simple the tool is meant to be there to uh help you rather than to force you to learn how it works so uh and, and that's why we have examples to uh to help with things Okay, I think that's it for- Sorry, uh, I have a question here. So these captured yep. sessions, are they, are they like stored in like the NVRAM or like the ROM? Is, is it temporarily stored or is it like currently stored? Gotcha, like gotcha. Yeah. Yep, so again, it's a little bit up to whoever writes the script. What I'm showing here, like those state paths, they end up in RAM. So the, the we have a process that's called the event manager. It's the one that really publishes uh, these values on behalf of the script. So it will be stored inside the event manager's uh, uh, memory, essentially. Now you could, uh, if you wanted to store these, you could store them to the file system. You could also make a rest call somewhere else and post the values if you wanted. That's kind of the, 
the beauty of making this a framework rather than a, a feature is that however you want to consume the data, you don't have to use the streaming telemetry. I mean, uh, I, I think that's, that's pretty, pretty cool. But if you want to write files or uh, you know, post some data somewhere, you can do that as part of the script as well.